All right. Hey, folks, welcome to the next interview uh, episode of the Skeptical Leftist podcast. It's been quite a while since I did an interview uh, episode, and I have a couple almost all set for you to see and hear. And uh, yeah, the last time I did this was way back in May, so I'm a bit out of practice. Uh, I'm, but I'm trying to get this out in a decent amount of time. It's been a very busy summer, but recently, the uh, yeah, with lots of stuff going on between uh, homeless encampments in Regina and and uh, and just stuff in the news locally that I could talk about or like stuff that I've been watching uh, internationally or or like federally <coughs> that I could talk about. But uh, yeah, so recently, but the most recent one is the uh, uh, province of Saskatchewan released a new policy around pronouns and gender transition for youth in public schools. Um, <coughs> so as you would expect from backwards conservative provincial government, it's all about including parents in any decisions to use pronouns for youth or any name changes at school. Uh, so if your kid has a na- nickname they prefer with their cha- friends, then you probably will be informed by the school. Or if your kid is trans and they want a name more commonly associated with their gender identity, then uh, they uh, then you might be uh, informed uh, about that. Even if your kid doesn't want you to be, if, you, uh, if they request that the people at school start using different pronouns, then you'll probably be informed about that. Um, and the defense of this nonsense is, you know, the typical stuff. Uh, parental rights, kids don't understand what's real, it's it's a phase, um, it leaves them open to grooming or what have you. They uh, It's by people who don't understand how education works. It's by people who don't understand how sex education works, for sure. Um, it's yet another conservative government placating the right-wing bigoted base by passing a policy that will harm trans kids. Uh, I should also mention the restriction against Planned Parenthood handing out pamphlets or participating in sex education programs across the province. Uh, A few months ago, some reactionary parents saw a pamphlet at a school and declared on Twitter that kids were being groomed at schools. Um, Zero people who use the term groomers against education actually give a fuck about kids' safety. None of them do. Zero people. Uh, so as a small province with a very small minded government, we apparently do things because a single reactionary parent makes a tweet about it. So (laughs) this pamphlet is now, and, and Planned Parenthood is now being under review by the government, uh, before they are allowed to participate in sex education programs. And we can just ignore the benefits of proper sex education and the importance of a young person's right to choose abortion or staying pregnant because we have a narrative about grooming with zero evidence beyond a very chill pamphlet. It's enough to make me hate this province even more than I did before. Um, So if you're from Regina, there will be a demonstration outside of the legislature on September 2nd to protest the new policy. Uh, As of the date of recording, that is next Saturday. So today is uh, Sunday August 27th when I'm recording this and the, uh, yeah. So next week, uh, I know there are a lot of transphobic people out there these days. It's like the hatred of trans people is becoming more and more popular in all the rhetoric we see in the U S and it's made its way into Canada, which I guess shouldn't be surprising considering Jordan Peterson is the grandpa of modern transphobia. He, he made a big deal out of using pronouns that for students at uh, universities and he's been fighting against anything inclusive of trans people for uh quite a few years now uh i don't really have anything to say except that i can offer any trans people in saskatchewan my full support uh and if you feel you are in danger email me at mind of a skeptical leftist and i will reply and we can figure out the best way to get you safe uh i will even give you if you email me i will give you my personal cell number if you're in danger and need to be extracted from the situation um uh yeah so if if any transphobes see this i suggest you learn to empathize with trans people and support the choices that others make even if you don't understand them it costs nothing to mind your own fucking business teachers aren't turning kids trans there isn't an epidemic of trans kids transitioning and talking about gender gender dysphoria transition transitioning or the existence of non-straight people doesn't train your children to be or do those things it just teaches them that the world isn't as binary as you were taught and that's a good thing so i think that's all i can say on the subject uh, make sure to support your local pride groups or uh, anyone who is helping LGBTQ plus kids uh, or anybody on the LGBTQ plus spectrum. And with that, on to the pitch. Thank you to all my patrons and an extra special thanks to new patron August. Uh, patrons make it possible for me to do this show and the more I get from this, 
the less I have to work at a second job or by doing gig work. Um, you can become a supporter at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist. Support levels start at a dollar per month or one dollar fifty for Canadians. If you can't support me with money, then please hit the like button or go and write a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser. I can always use more ratings and reviews, so please make sure to check out the links in the show notes. You should also go subscribe on YouTube or in the podcast app of your choice so that you get new episodes as soon as they come out. And a like and comment on YouTube is also good for the is always good for the algorithm too. Uh, so feel free to contact me by messaging on social media, leaving a comment on YouTube, using the form on my con- the contact form on my website, skepticalleftist.com, or by emailing me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. And with that, on to the show. All right. Hi, and welcome to the Skeptical Leftist Podcast, uh, the podcast where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And today I'm joined by Stafford. Um, Thanks for joining me. Hello. Thank you for having me, Corey. Um, It's a real pleasure to be here. First time I've done a recording like this, actually, so I'm a little bit nervous because... yeah, you know, no worries. And I'm still a long way off completing uh, the book that I've come here to promote. Uh, I, I am about 60,000 words in now. But oh, jeez, wow. But there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of editing. Uh, so that, that some of that will be taken out and then sure. bits will be swapped around and what have you. Uh, but I'm, I'm definitely over halfway done anyway. So <laughs> I can say that it is going to be a production that, it will come out, it will be published. So, nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And it will be free as well because, you know, I want people to read the content. So I'll probably, uh, at some point, like on my Twitter page, I'll have like a uh, PDF. So, you know, if people want to support me and actually buy a hard copy, you know, that'd be well appreciated, but they don't have to. Right, it's right. it's a message, right, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's like uh, I have a Patreon for my show if people want to donate that's great but i try if if they want the bonus content or whatever that people can get i'll just send it to them all they got to do is ask like i'm not a, i'm not about restricting content i'm about like yeah let's just yeah. get the messages yeah, out yeah. right yeah that's yeah. it that's it and regular uh, listeners might notice my voice is a little fucked up right now <laughs> i'm like i got i've been sick for like a week and i'm just trying to i'm on the men but my obviously my voice is still fucked. <laughs> oh yeah. Have, have you been? Have you had a lot of interviews in the last week? No, not really. I've, I've oh, kind okay. of been chilling. Uh... That's one relief, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> from yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, having to keep talking <laughs> all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. yeah. I've, I've done. Uh, I have done speaking before. I've done. Uh, I actually done a public speaking. I I done a reading of uh, the first chapter of my manifesto. Oh. Uh, and that was in uh, like a, a little cafe uh, nice. that a guy I know runs. So uh, yeah, he he does like open mic nights. Oh, that's that, cool. was, that was quite nerve wracking. I, ha- I had a few more drinks. <laughs> I bet, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you know uh, it's quite it's quite a concern. But I'm going to keep on doing uh, stuff like that. I think I'm going to do more open mic nights because nice. I I know some guys who who are big into it. So I'm hoping I might join them and go along and, yeah, get get a few uh, readings of maybe the manifesto. But if not, if that's a bit heavy, I can write something shorter for the night because it is pretty heavy. And uh, so I've heard, like, mixed reviews about what I've written. So okay. I've got some people have said to me, uh, like, I actually sent it to, like, the, the head of, like, a philosophy group in my area. Okay. And, He's well into it, and he said, uh, we're going to actually have a meeting to discuss oh. it uh, at the end of August. Wow. Because so, they've got loads of other things to discuss before then, but he said, like, we're going to get everyone a copy and, you know, we'll have a read of it in the group and we'll come back and give you an op- opinion on it. Because uh, it's quite, uh, I'd say it's quite original. Uh, what I wrote to you is I consider myself an evolutionary anarchist. Mm -hmm. rather than a revolutionary anarchist and i suppose what i mean by that is i believe that uh anarchism is actually like a an evolutionary state that we will reach uh because we're we're essentially uh transcending a a struggle uh 
that, that, that's almost like uh, we've been stuck in for years. So like property, I was talking to Corey earlier about property and how I'm a complete abolitionist of all property. Uh, I believe the uh, it is the basis of the majority of conflict it is it's one property, uh, but also just hierarchical uh, dominance in general. Yeah. And, and, and this is something that's been in, in history. It's, it's territorialism. You know, uh, obviously, chimpanzees are our closest relatives, uh, and they have that same ter- they have that same territorial uh, dominance right. disputes. Uh, but we think we are higher and mightier than a lot of these creatures. But we behave in very similar ways right. uh, in terms of conflict. Uh, I mean, the, the majority of like uh, I don't know, you might see rams fighting. It's over territory, uh, mm-hmm. and, and we are the same. We want the uh, huge, not not us. We're not, but <laughs> some lot of people want yeah. control over vast amounts of land and wealth and resources, yeah. and also other people. They want them under their control in their tribe. Yeah. Uh, so we think uh, we are miles ahead of, I know, chimpanzees or some other animals, but really. Uh, we can be, we have the capacity to be, uh, but at the moment we are not. So I, I believe that it really is an evolutionary struggle uh, as well as a revolutionary struggle. For sure. I, I, I quite like that because it does feel to me like uh, like that anarchism or like anarchy is the natural state of people or beings, right? Like It's more human, isn't it? It's yeah. More- yeah, rather than having people rule over each other, like we're all on the same it, level, so it, it takes away our humanity, I believe. Well, the things that define us as humans, one of the main things that define us as a human being is our choice, our capacity to decide to, Sorry, to choose. Uh, a lot of uh, other thing, well, stuff and and I suppose other animals, uh, they can't decide like, oh, right, I want to be a doctor. I want to be, I want to be, there. <laughs> right. that, you know, they have, uh, they're, they're in this survival mode of just thinking, oh, I need to, I need to get on and, and, and survive and eat and basically pass on my genes. Right. And this is, this is the same mindset they want to keep us trapped in, basically. So I believe there's a almost like a conscious effort to stop us from evolving and being our more human selves, it's more of a, it's a very anti-human system that, that basically wants to keep us on this, this very low, uh, evolutionary rung almost. For sure. Uh, and, and keep us as, you know, as cogs, as sheep, maybe you'd say, but <laughs> just keep us on that low level. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, uh, so I guess we've kind of jumped maybe a little bit ahead, but like, who are you as a person? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, see, I see going to a bit of my history and everything, although, sure. uh, pardon me. Not too far if you don't want, like, I don't yeah, want yeah, to. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pardon me, doesn't uh, want to go too far because I've had, had so many crazy things in my life. Uh, but, yeah, I, I uh, you know, I, I've, I've had some hardships in my life, I could say that, uh, and I suppose – those things almost led me to criticize myself. My, my parents were very critical of me. Uh, so I, uh, I, I believe I, I've, I've looked for, for answers. I looked for things to make sense. I didn't have that security. Uh, you know, oh, we've got a comment here. Enjoy the idea of how I'm fine. Yeah. Enjoy the idea. Of- yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. 100%. It's how they, they, they control us because they know when we, when we start thinking and when we start really having empathy for one another and taking care of each other, their game's up. Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, when we have that higher awareness of of more than just ourselves, uh, a meta conscious awareness, I suppose, a self-awareness, but also with that comes the awareness of everything, the awareness of each other and that right. we're all human, we're all suffering, we're all going through the same experiences. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, to, to carry on, uh, yeah, with, with, with myself, I'm, I'm doing it at the moment. Uh, obviously I told you before I've, I've been homeless and stuff like that. Right. Uh, I ended up, uh, you know, ha- helping a lot of charity, uh, causes, 
uh, for the book as well. I've been doing a lot of agricultural stuff. Oh, no. Uh, I believe that that will play a big part in, in the future, having to look after ourselves a bit and grow our own food. Uh, so I, I, I volunteer on like a community garden and we have uh, those sorts of ethics, you know, are quite left wing and nice. uh, and sort of, I suppose, libertarian in the real classical sense. of libertarian. Right, right. Uh, not in the American way. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. No, we're not money orientated. Uh, we're all good, good people. We, we, we serve the community down there nice. and in, in serving the community, we're set free. You know, we, 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 we help each other. So, you know, it's a support network. So I, I do that. Uh, I've also, uh, taken on a project with, uh, one of my colleagues who I mentioned to you before, uh, Lucy. Uh, we are doing uh, a project called Route to Resistance. And it's basically uh, for a homeless charity. Okay. So cool. uh, all them guys there, uh, we're hoping to get them more active uh, and and skilled in you know in gardening and out learning outdoor stuff, uh, and, and just empowering them a bit because you know society often tells me, well, if you're not in an employed job, that you can't be useful. But we're t- sort of teaching them that that's not true and. Uh, we've got another comment. Yeah. Uh, it says, uh, I, I'm going to guess this is pronounced Amelia. Uh, <laughs> uh, said, M- mutual aid and care for each other rather than a rule of system puts their power into question by another person. Glad seeing more po- people join up and writing about hacktivism and crew of aid anarchists. I'm yeah, big for one. sure. That's very cool. I, I'm uh Thank you, Amelia, for uh, joining uh, this. I, I I don't believe I've seen you comment on my videos before, so uh, that's cool. <laughs> Always love seeing new people. Yeah. My sisters and Amelia. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that that is very true. I, I really do believe in mutual aid, and obviously with charity work, uh, you know, it's really getting to be quite a network. Me and my colleague Lucy, we're kind of almost binding all these charities together now. Uh, so we're all supporting each other. So when anyone has an event or anyone needs support of a certain kind, we'll be able to lend a hand. Nice. Uh, obviously, uh, I did want to, I suppose uh, uh, you said earlier about like, did I want to give like thanks to anyone? And I suppose I, I, I will later in, in the video. Sure. But, uh, yeah, because obviously you've got, You've got some section bits, haven't you? I yeah, think. sort of a little structure anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Not firm, yeah, but like have. a little bit. Good to have. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. It helps get stuff done. <laughs> but it's voluntary structure, isn't it? So that's fine. Um, yeah, that's right. Obviously, everything should be choice, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. And even, and even I'd say there's some things like some anarchists are completely against, like say leadership, for example, some right. anarchists are really against leadership. But I actually think if you have a leader that you want to follow, that's, that's fine. Like that, that's okay. Uh, but it's, it's when it's rulership. I've heard another anarchist yeah. talk, use that word a lot. You don't hear that very often, but when it becomes rulership, that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah. Uh, like an enforced kind of like, leadership where you don't get to be actually like it's yeah, not yeah. a choice to follow yeah 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 it's all about choice all about freedom yeah uh, also, uh, yeah so i guess uh was there more you wanted to talk about yourself or do you want to like talk about yeah, your book I'll, a little I'll bit? move on to the book uh we've we've got another comment i don't know if you want to oh, read all, yep. all the comments let's, now. let's take a look at that uh also beginning to try and trying to help to make mental health frameworks online and then into mutual aid. Hope to find teams to build more with a awesome to hear. Best of luck. Thanks so much. That's awesome. Good luck with your oh, projects. That. That's awesome. Love that comment. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. It can be, it can be hard sometimes uh, to find. I mean, I, I have tried to reach out to people online uh, as well, uh, but it's very, it's very hard sometimes because I think, uh, there's a bit of a, um, I don't know, like, um, 
maybe people don't trust as quickly, particularly if you're not like your registered uh, a therapist or something. It's a, some people find it hard to open up. Yeah, uh, but it was something I've I've put out and said if anyone wants to sort of speak to me online on my Twitter or something, you know, that they can personal message me and I'm happy to talk to anyone about anything really. Uh, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a certain amount of energy. Like you, no, no one's an island. Like no one can take out everyone's problem. Yeah, that's but right. the idea of mutual aid is you scratch my back, I scratch yours, kind of thing, isn't it? So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Amelia uh, says the separation uh, changes the dynamic and stress. Yeah, I think I think that like uh, online, the online way of communicating, it's helpful in many ways. Like you and I are connecting because of the internet, uh, but also there's like a, uh, I don't know, like a a strange dynamic where uh, almost often there's a cult of personality between people, and like some you'll find somebody that has like hundreds and uh, or thousands of followers and they'll defend those people against any kind of like criticism or even when they actually do something seriously wrong. Right. And that's they not good. Really hardcore fans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a worry with a lot of these, these influencers. Uh, and some of them, they seem to, they just put, they say anything, they'll put up music and they just come out with anything, and people will literally believe anything. The craziest stuff, like uh, I saw one video that someone posted the other day uh, saying that this woman, I don't know, did you see that uh, video of that woman? She went viral in an aeroplane going, that, that motherfucker ain't real, pointing. Uh, it, it, went, it went viral. but Okay. But I don't think I saw it. But... <laughs> this woman, she saw uh, uh, one of the... Uh, waiting staff in the air, in the plane was a robot or something yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> i went down to the i went down to the uh to the comments thinking people would be like oh you're just talking out your ass but people really did believe it is that right so, yeah 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 there was quite a few people going you know yeah so it sort of makes sense you kind and of you, hope that like yeah. people would be like i don't know able to have some critical analysis like yeah. You see a video like that and you go, well, I don't know. How do I know what this person is saying like makes any sense? The, At least the guy, the guy was smiling as well. So to me, <laughs> when he was talking about this, you could see he almost had the dupers delight kind of uh, smile as if like, oh, I've got a way with telling these people. I, I'm just sort of making stuff up, but they're all falling for it, hook, line, yeah. and sinker. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I really believe it. But yeah, I should, I should, uh, I should go on with the book a bit. Sure, so sure. It's, uh, in a few different sections. So the first really is understanding our nature. And like I say, uh, that we are like toy space beings, but also we have this lower and higher side. So we have the side that is, uh, the survival based side, uh, the fear based side. And then we have the, uh, the sort of, uh, more advanced side, so like the higher empathy and uh, creativity, and the, what we'd call what we call humanity, I suppose. Uh, yeah. And I talk about that duality uh, and the basically uh, the interplay that that has on us, and you know how it, you know really it's quite. A, a, I believe we're in some sort of transitional phase, basically between. Uh, will, will we get to this anarchist state or will we destroy ourselves, basically? <laughs> Boy, I, I know that sounds uh, grim, but, you know, in a way, in yeah. a, way it's a chance for us to, to prove ourselves and to go, yes, we, we, are, we aren't going to keep uh, destroying the earth and treating each other so badly. You know, we are more, more human than what bad people would would make us believe. Yeah, and it, it's, it is unfortunate, but that is like the actual choice. Like either we reach a better way of running society or we destroy ourselves. And that's mm. just like, yeah, yeah, it sounds grim, but it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's paradise or oblivion. That was a <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, and then from there, I sort of go on to uh, obviously society's nature. And, uh, like how society operates and how a lot of our moral systems, uh, and again, that's something 
uh, I was I was going to tell you about is basically people have these completely false moral systems that are basically based off of defending power. Right. So, say for example, religion. What is the the main that like the worst sin of of all religions? It's not obeying. It's not right. uh, yeah. believing authority. And, and but it's the same with the government. The the, the law, for example. Uh, laws are put there to def- not to defend us as people frequently parrot. They go, oh, the laws are here to protect me. It's to protect the elite from us. Right. Uh, that's the reality of yeah. law. So I'd, I'd consider law a, a pseudo-moral framework and also religion and a lot of other things that we have, like patriotism, like I'm serving my country. Uh, that That's a, a pseudo-moral system that's been created around the basis that basically non-conformity is like the worst sin. So you, you go against authority, oh, you're, you're a bad person. You know, you, uh, right. you, you, you still, I know, a bag of crisps. You're a bad person. But meanwhile, a corporation can go and be robbing a country of the wealth and the people who are living in poverty and that's okay. Yeah, they could uh-huh. totally be uh, running like slave slave uh, labor and like, yeah. Uh, we got a uh, couple comments. Some random geek uh, on Twitch says, don't even get me started on laws and the police state in this world. Oh, and yeah, the law. There oh. were even ugly laws at one time. Yeah. So so, so laws, uh, ugly laws, is, is that laws against <laughs> being ugly? Against people being out in public if they were... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you do wonder uh i, I mean <laughs> i mean they are ugly laws aren't they i mean they uh, are indeed particularly uh property obviously is a big one but yeah. again property is uh is again another power thing you know uh but obviously enshrined in law and and the joke is they then call it a, a justice system right when they're Obviously, the law does condone the idea that you can be a billionaire and you can be, you can basically be with nothing and you can have debtors come and take the last possessions you have and throw you out your house. Uh, and that is called a justice system. <laughs> it is quite Orwellian before, you know, obviously people go, oh, we're going to go into an Orwellian society, but in some ways, well, it's already been like that for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, uh, well, and then you you think about, like, the way in which, like, the police state and, uh, like, governments are currently, like, tracking and spying on citizens all the time. Like, I don't want to get too conspiratorial about it, but it's literally happening where, like, the NSA in the U.S. is tracking every single person via their cell phone. And, (laughs) And they have access to all the data that you put online right so it's pretty nasty yeah, stuff 100 percent, and uh it's it's a uh an effort by the top uh to keep their power and their wealth yeah. uh, and obviously another way they do that is through disinformation uh the media is plays a massive part in it both the uh but well i was talking earlier to Corey about you know the, these two sides so you have, uh, you know, the liberal media and then the conservative media, uh, but they are basically the same thing. Uh, <laughs> and they, they basically just pitting regular people against one another. Uh, and it's such a machine uh, of control. It, it really is quite uh, Machiavellian. Uh, we get yeah. some more comments. Yep. Uh, Amelia on YouTube said, uh, have many heavy stories being roughed or sketchily Sketchily clocked by the police as a queer trans woman and the scary force of life with things. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry that you have to deal oh, with those things. Yeah, and then uh, we've got uh, some random geek says calling it the justice system is much like how the USA doesn't have a war department; it has a state department, and it's not the war industry; it's the defense industry, <laughs> right? And then uh, Amelia said, "Stay safe." Yeah, so, thank you, Amelia. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, that is very true. Uh, so many things like that are twisted, like the free market, for example. I mean, I don't remember the last time I went to a market and got anything free. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, their I, their I, pure I, free market only works for those with the most money anyway, right? Yeah. And it's and it's not free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just not free. Uh, it's it's uh, again. It's a, it's another twisted with words. And it's it's like people go, "Oh, I'm in a free country," but you know, if you're governed, you're not free. <laughs> you're governed. You're controlled. Uh, so so yeah. all these things are they a mind fuck. Basically, they they twisted these words, and yeah. you know, unfortunately, I wish people would be more critical and go, you know, actually sit and think about these things for a second because you know if they did they would realize you know that we have been lied to hook line and sinker yeah. uh, particularly about morality and, and 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 what's wrong with life being basically just obedience it's right to obey I, I think that is one of the most offensive things i find uh especially when i consider humanity uh being so intrinsically entwined with our choice and being able to decide things for ourselves and then um, that being taken away uh, by these these despotic people. Right. It's mm-hmm. quite apparent. Um, the, the, obviously, yeah. my book as well isn't just a critique of what's wrong with the world and also explaining our nature. It's pretty comprehensive, Uh Beyond looking at ourselves and society, uh, okay, we, we have one more comment. No worries, thank you for kindness. Uh, uh, no and, worries, thank you for the kindness. Just hoping to and going to fight for a better change. And as an open source Intel Cyber, I'm working to help la, Intel, la, oh, in the Intolerant Left and Rosa. Yeah, awesome. Uh, bless you. And you, you can always find me. I assume you'll put a link of like my Twitter maybe on the YouTube channel and Absolutely. you can always find me as well if you need to contact me. Uh, I don't know if you're UK based, obviously it's nice to have a, a real, actually like meet up and see people <laughs> right. and it'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, obviously I, I continue. Uh, yeah. So where, where was I, Corey? I was just going, yeah, I was going to oh, say. Oh yes. You, it's, your book isn't just a critique. It's also yes. uh it's also a solution. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm going to get into different things. Obviously, the first is, is looking at ourselves and saying, oh, have we, have we got any hierarchical ways? Have, are we behaving consistently? Are we behaving with integrity? Right. Uh, and that, that's sort of one, one element of it. Uh, because obviously, you know, it's, it's easy to point a finger, but sometimes you need to look back at yourself and say, am I doing enough? Um, yeah. Am I living by the principles that I'd like to see others live by? And I think that's, that's super important. So I talk about that. And then I talk about actually building up uh, networks and, and meeting people on different marketing and recruitment strategies for actually building up a network of people nice. uh yeah and uh i suppose like meetings and living alternatively living without money uh i even go into uh i don't know like uh for example you know i'm quite uh i know ellis talked about this with me like his his criminal past and things like that so i even talk about stuff like that uh which obviously, you know, might rile some people up, but it's quite a radical book. Uh, and then beyond that, I talk about uh, leaving the grid and obviously something that I've been learning about now, uh, like, uh, well, I, I talk about everything from basically democratically schooling children on, on like a commune to uh, sm- how to smoke our own meat and <laughs> st- it, it's going to be a quite a big book when it's done. <laughs> nice. So uh, yeah, sort of. Um, and beyond that, obviously, I want to I want to get a model of an ideal society, uh, and then uh, what it might look like, what it might be like, some of the different concepts uh, that will replace basically the massive uh, pseudo Christian based concepts that we have now, like for example, property. The idea that uh, disobedience is bad, uh, and going to a system where we teach critical thinking, uh, and you know, for example, uh, common utility and access 
rather than property. Uh, yeah, uh, and then I'm going to add some other bits in as well, like I may do a bit on technology because I think that's quite important. Uh, it's just some like extra chapters that that will that I think are important to talk about. Cool. Uh, so it's going to be quite going to be quite comprehensive, a practical guide on uh, on self development as an anarchist, uh, community development as an anarchist, and then actually getting off off the grid, off the system, uh, and, and being in, I suppose, in more mutual aid type scenarios rather than one dependent on corporations and two dependent on, uh, like, the state and, and, right. and the bigger systems that are out there. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's quite the crux of it. Um, okay, uh, that's a, so I guess... The Transcendence Manifesto, like the title, uh, where did that come from? Basically, uh, the concept of transcendence is uh, in relation to transcendence of a struggle, specifically because I talk about it from an evolutionary lens, mm. uh, and I find this is quite rare. There's not many anarchists, if any, that I've seen talking about this. Uh, the idea is that we will transcend the, the hierarchical struggle that has enveloped much of nature and, and the idea that we've, that most animals have until now been a slave to nature and to that survival mode. But now we have self-awareness. We have the ability to do something different. So that is where transcendence comes in. It's about, uh, going beyond uh, that that survival mode going beyond uh, that very egocentric mode because I, I describe uh, the way an animal say operates uh, it's only focused on its own survival so it's mm. egocentric and it's the same with people with less empathy uh, they are egocentric they aren't they're just concerned about their wealth how they look and they're not concerned about everyone else the collective right. uh so I talk, but in a way that sets us all up because you have these very egocentric people, very greedy people that sets us all up for failure because we're all fighting one another. And uh, that's not a happy life to be constantly embroiled with conflicts and petty disputes with people and trying to get one up on other people yeah. all the time in careers or in school, for example. I mean, they, they started young by basically telling kids, they can't share their answers, you know. Right. You know, uh, you know when they they could be working together and getting much further. Uh, so it is it is basically that struggle, that almost uh, uh, precognitive struggle that we find in nature. It is a thing of becoming cognitive, becoming self aware, and aware of others, and then we transcend that which has held nature down all along that survival struggle. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, I, so I guess we got about 10 minutes, 15 minutes left. So we'll go quick through uh, counter-propaganda. Okay. Which you have, uh, the worst thing currently misinforming people, I believe, to be the, the ego slash religious-based pseudo moral doctrines that hold a chronic sway over most of humanity yes and that's quite <laughs> <laughs> but uh i think i've already kind of covered that uh, yeah a little bit eh? about like religion and, and stuff like that obviously my book covers it in quite depth so okay. anyone who, who wants to go on twitter can actually read the the, the manifesto on there uh or, or a section of it that's that's complete uh but, uh, yeah, basically, uh, we have these moral systems that are designed to defend power. And, and that's all they're there for. Religion, for example, I believe is a great, uh, a great one of that. I mean, I can't say that it was definitely founded for, for that, but it seems to have been used that way, uh, mm. most religions to defend, uh, power and the idea that you crit your critique of power. Uh, and not trusting, not having faith in that power is basically the worst thing you can have. Yeah, like 
uh, I think I think of the the Christian Church, right? Like, regardless of where it started, it's a tool that's been used to keep certain people on top and other people underneath for mm. you know hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's uh, it's something that where even if you're a, if you're a spiritual person, even if you you know even if you have some spirituality that you believe in, it seems like the church is detrimental to that too. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it is 100%. And I actually talk about this in my book and I actually posit the idea that spirituality uh, and religion are diametrically opposed. So you've got, uh, you know, spirit, I mean, when you think of the opposite of spirituality, I suppose I'd say it's uh, materialism. Uh, so if spirituality is the opposite of materialism, Surely, being more conscious, more aware, is is basically like being spiritual. Right. Your, your your mindset is going upwards. You're thinking of things around you. You're becoming more aware of your surroundings, and yet they, religion doesn't want that. Religion, right. even the Adam and Eve story, uh, is basically the tree of knowledge, and yeah. they take that and they're punished for the knowledge. Uh, so, I believe that spirituality. Uh, is almost you're heightening your knowledge. Right. So, yeah. 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 I like yeah. That. Uh, and and there may be some Christians who agree with me, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say. Yeah. It quite, seems quite. Seems quite. Uh, particularly when you look at the Adam and Eve story, it's quite. It seems to to go back to the roots almost of. of right. Uh, but yeah, if you want to move on, yeah, we. we can yeah. Sure. Um, so. Uh, nor this is uh, we'll go to into foes and comrades. Then I want to I want to emphasize you uh, you didn't want to do a foe. You didn't want to draw attention to anybody that was no. uh, a specific per, bad person or no. what have you. So I, 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 don't I do appreciate that. that. Uh, but I, what I will say is I do think uh, anarchist um, link. I don't know what the word is, like lingo. I suppose uh, I think we should change some things like the way we talk about, particularly an antithesis to anarchism, because mm. I, I hear a lot of anarchists, I suppose on the an, uh, anarcho-communism side, that they'll go like, uh, you know, capitalism is like the, the antithesis of, right. of anarchy. But obviously you have the an narco catalysts who are just yeah i don't like <laughs> but, we don't but, call them anarchists they're, they're yeah, no, no. <laughs> but, but but they will also there'll be a certain portion of anarchists who will go oh the state is the bad guy but i think all of these are just capitalism the state they're all just expressions of hierarchy so i suppose that's yeah. one thing I, i'd say like we need to be oh and specifically dominance hierarchies because i right. think you can have a legitimate hierarchy of knowledge it's like uh yeah like somebody once described like waiting in line to do something is uh, technically a hierarchy right like the first person is in the line gets yeah. to do it first and the last person does it last but yeah like if you yeah, include I'm dominance probably. in there yeah like it yeah yeah it's, uh, it's, a, it's about respect isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, you, you want to ask the next bit? Yeah, and then I guess the other thing would be uh, uh, comrades. Uh, you have oh, uh, you wanted to say a big thank you to your sister slash comrade Lucy. Yes, I would love to say a big thank you to Lucy. Lucy really had faith in me uh, when I was homeless. Uh, I was actually thrown out. I've, I've been more or less moving in and out of exes and family places for basically years, you know, right. uh, that sort of my lifestyle was basically m m migrating from one place to another uh, in all sorts of unstable situations. Uh, but I, I actually moved in uh, with a relative who I, I knew to be fairly unstable anyway, uh, but she accused me of stealing uh, quite a bit of stuff off of her. Right. And, uh, yeah, around that time, I had started helping with community gardening, uh, obviously, you know, to do with wanting to learn more off-grid skills and that. Uh, and uh, Lucy really did take me, uh, if you're listening, I, I hope she's listening. I imagine you will listen, Lucy, because I've, I've sent a link earlier. Uh, 
So uh, I really want to say thank you for everything you did for me and give me that bit of humanity and that bit of decency uh, to let me have a shower and to let me stay over at yours some nights. It, it really, you know, uh, it, it means a lot when people do that kind of thing. That's great. And uh, I, I'd go on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you can continue. Yeah. Well, no, I think uh, that's about all I have for structure. If there's anything we want to talk about before it's time to go, then absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I, I'll just say thank you to everyone else who's helped me with the, the projects that I'm doing and uh, the charities who are involved with Mutilade effort. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, no, that yeah. sounds awesome. So I guess uh, before we go, where can people find all of your stuff? Okay, uh, <laughs> we'll find a link in the description, I'm assuming. So uh, that will be my uh, my uh, Twitter. I get quite quite antsy and controversial on there sometimes. Uh, but I also have uh, an excerpt of the manifesto on there. So if you're interested in evolutionary anarchism or transcendence as a concept, uh, then I suggest you go on there and you'll, you'll be able to see four chapters at least. And, you know, I'm hoping to get some more up soon. Nice. You've got 60,000 words and it's four chapters. This is going to be uh, a long no, book. No, that's four <laughs> chapters. What, what, what is available to the public. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, and, that's going to be a long uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do some restructuring with it, but. Uh, no, cool. Uh, you're right. Yeah, that's all right. Um, uh, really well, good of you to have me. Oh, yeah. No, I'm happy to yeah. happy to have met you. I appreciate yeah. you, and I'm I'm definitely going to check out your uh, manuscript that you've got so far. And and uh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, and maybe we can maybe we can meet and and, and conversate about it again sometime. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know? Awesome. Have a good one. Bye bye. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching and or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends and on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it, and it helps me keep the internet and the power on. A big thanks to my top patrons, Some Random Geek, Damian Marie Athope, Justin Clark, Christopher Taylor, Dan F. Smith, and Lisa Glass. If you want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a like or you on YouTube or a five star rating and a review on Apple podcasts would be great. If you want to find out more from me, then make sure to check out the show notes for links to all my stuff or check out my website, skepticalleftist.com. That's where you can find all my social media spaces and communities. You can also email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Make sure to leave a comment on the video or on my website. Join your local org, print off some posters or pamphlets, and spread the propaganda.